Greetings my wayward witches and welcome back to Sacred Space. I've been really inspired by the history lessons Bex has shared on the traditions of her heritage through the hashtag 21 days till Yule and was inspired to do the same. The holiday season is a prime time to try the latest trending hot beverage yummy and then curl up with it as you watch your favorite holiday movies. So I thought I'd share one of my many moon milk recipes with you and the history and culture behind it. Although moon milk is supremely trendy, it has cultural significance that can't be ignored. And I thought I'd take this time to bring it back home to its roots because moon milk is a centuries old tradition that is part of Ayurvedic medicine and would be formulated and prescribed by Ayurvedic doctors. Moon milk is a traditional distressing drink that's generally recommended for anyone who's undergoing emotional or mental stress which, let's face it, we're all suffering from this year. For a drink to be an authentic Ayurvedic moon milk, it should contain adaptogens and an assortment of herbs, fruits, and spices that have sedative, digestive, and calming properties that are based on your doshas. Now, doshas are basically how the elements are represented in your body and is unique to each individual, but I'm gonna get more into that on my Patreon in the new year. So let's discuss the staple ingredients that makes a real moon milk. Milk was traditionally used because it contained tryptophan, an amino acid that induces sleep, melatonin, a hormone that signals it's time for sleep, and calcium, which besides building strong bones, helps muscles relax and prepares our body for sleep. That said, I no longer drink cow's milk, so I did some research into alternatives and nut and seed milk, including coconut milk, thankfully, contain high levels of tryptophan as well. Spices were selected that strengthened the immune system and enhanced energy levels, once again based on your doshas. As a result, adaptogens were a key component as they helped you deal with stressors, which in turn help support your immune system. But not all adaptogens are created equal. They each have their own gifts to impart. In Ayurveda, the main adaptogen used would be ashwagandha. As a moon milk, it was ideal because not just did it help with stress levels, it also helped to regulate your circadian rhythms because let's face it, stress and insomnia go hand in hand. Ashwagandha is also anti-inflammatory and nervine and has the antioxidant benefits. When we're troubled, our sleep is too. Ashwagandha's botanical name, Withania somnifera, gives us some further clues as to its properties. The Latin word somnifera is translated as sleep-inducing, reflecting its abilities to support deeper sleep. Our circadian rhythms, which is the body's clock that naturally prepares us for sleep and wake, is affected by cortisol levels. Cortisol should naturally decrease in the early evening in preparation for sleep, but stress can overrule these rhythms and cortisol can stay elevated into the night causing insomnia or restless sleep. So the great thing about ashwagandha is it controls the production of the stress hormones and allows our bodies to retain natural sleeping rhythms. Now I've given a little fact on ashwagandha because it's the basis of a true moon milk and most people don't understand that. I found a really great article on bustle.com that noted, while North Americans have trended this concept, it's important to acknowledge the cultural roots and the implications of Western culture discovering a drink that existed for thousands of years. That's not to say that moon milk can't be enjoyed by everyone, but it's important to be aware of whether you're potentially contributing to the appropriation of a culture and educate yourself on what you're consuming and why it matters to those who still practice Ayurvedic lifestyles. Essentially, moon milk is more complex and nuanced than it seems on the surface. It's tempting to brew up a cup without considering the history of the drink, but educating yourself will help you avoid causing undue disrespect and harm and, if I may add personally, will ensure you actually are drinking a moon milk. This is just a clip of the article, which will be in the description box below. So now that the history lesson is over, the drink itself is amazing, and as I have noted, has truly great healing properties, ideal for getting you de-stressed, relaxed, and ready for a cozy night in with your favorite holiday movie. Now let's add some magic into the mix. Another adaptogen that I love working with is chaga. You can readily research its amazing properties, but I'm going to share the plant spirit medicine I personally receive from chaga. 
Chaga is actually a parasite, a mushroom that grows on birch trees. It has the healing properties to aid with tumors in the body. On an energetic level, this spoke to me about removing unwanted energy blockages from within and surrounding my body. I visualize it breaking away the barriers and blockages caused in my energy flow. This can also include emotional energy bodies and shields that we surround ourselves with that can prevent receiving and accepting of positive energy, such as love. I then add cacao nibs. Cacao is known as the heart blood of the Aboriginal peoples of Central and South America, as well as the islands from which I come. Mama used to make a cacao tea when we were growing up. It would take a long time over the stove and we would sit in the kitchen table and listen to her stories and share our own. It was truly a heart-opening time in the sacred space of an island kitchen. This time of the year, especially with all that we've witnessed and lived through, we need to release the negative energy blockages and open our hearts again. This also brings up another very important part of making a real, traditional moon milk. Time. Ayurveda translates the science of life. It's a holistic approach to healing body, mind, and spirit. The slow simmer milk should take at least 20 minutes to brew with you slowly stirring the pot. This is the part of the mind-spirit connection. It's the time you are supposed to start the decompression process and release and let go of the thoughts that are plaguing you from the day, or in this case, the year that we've survived. It's a process and it should be honored in the making of a traditional moon milk. I use this time to engage in breathing exercises and treat it as an act of meditation. Now, if you're working with pure ceremonial grade cacao, it is actually very bitter and is, like moon milk, a medicine. It needs to be measured out and taken in dosages. It is recommended never to exceed one ounce per person per vent. I'm using dry roasted cacao, which is my coffee substitute. To sweeten your brew, honey traditionally is used as a powerful natural sedative. However, if you're drinking the brew mainly to distress or are vegan, please use a substitute that works for you. I thought raw candy might be a fun option for a movie night. I have a few other milk recipes including a forest witch blend and of course the winter's hope blend. To make the forest witch blend, add chaga and cedar to the ashwagandha base. And I would recommend adding the cedar about halfway through the process. Chaga and ashwagandha are both, both very hard and it will take time for them to infuse the milk, but cedar is lighter, so you don't want it to be too strong. For the winter's hope, I add my ashwagandha, and then of course, the dried citrus and spices that we've become all too familiar with, ginger, cinnamon, and clove. I hope you'll try the recipes, and as you take your first sip, send out a thought to my ancestors for this amazing healing gift. Now my favorite movies to curl up with during the holiday season are listed below. Let me know if any are your favorites as well, and if you can suggest any more that I might have missed. For now, I wish you moon, milk, magical dreams, and a sweet, sweet night. Many blessings from me to you.